Bear Down Bears fans, on today's episode, we got to talk about day three of minicamp coming to a close. What was there that stood out today and our biggest takeaways from minicamp overall. All that and more in today's episode of the Windy City Breeze Sports Talk Daily. Let's go. Now, if you are new to the channel, please like the video. Please subscribe to the page. We do talk Chicago sports daily on this channel. It's the only channel talking Chicago sports, how Chicago talks. So make sure that you get in tune with us, man. So day three comes to a close. Mini camp is over. What did day three have to offer after all of the confusion yesterday between Justin Fields um, having a good day or having a bad day, which was weird. We got mixed reports from that from multiple sources. CHGO reported one thing. ESPN 1000 uh, uh, Chicago reported another thing. We had one report on our podcast that was similar to what we heard on the ESPN platform. There was a lot of news going around there, um, but today it didn't matter, right? Day three, Justin Fields came out and dominated the red zone drill, a little bit of a shorter day, um, so they were doing a lot of red zone stuff. Justin Fields apparently was lacing today and was using his arm to get the job done, also a little bit of athleticism. You got to love that because that's something that to me is going to be standing out so much, so much. When you're talking about this Chicago Bears team, because how many times either last season or just in Bears history has the Bears team been able to get to the red zone and get absolutely nothing out of it? I think that there's two things at play here. One, you have one of the best athletes in the NFL on your side. He seems like he's getting a little bit more accuracy. The decision making coming a little bit quicker in the red zone, which means he's going to be able to find his targets quicker. He's going to be able to make that decision of, okay, I got to make this pass or I'm going to use my legs, get the heck up out of here and use the fact that what is he six, four, something like that, um, that he's a massive human being to be able to get in to the end zone. Those are the things that excite me from Justin Fields' standpoint. The other thing that gets me excited is the guys who were involved in this. I believe Robert Tunyon caught one. I believe that uh, uh, um, Cole Komet caught another pass as well. So there's some bodies out there that are pretty large, including Equidamia St. Brown, who I believe caught another one. Um, and so you, you've got three guys there who are all above six feet tall. Two of them are your large tight ends. That's what you want to see from this Bears offense. We got targets down there, hopefully right Chase Claypool, and we'll talk about him a little bit more as we continue to go through this, but Chase Claypool coming back, right, adds into that. When you're talking about red zone targets, we got big bodies. Heck, we have a 6'2 running back that can get in there as well in Roshan Johnson. So I think that when you couple the fact that Justin Fields is going to be one of the better athletes, is going to be one of the people who's able to run uh, past the ball to some bigger targets with the fact that these bigger targets are basically going to be able to go in there and box out. And we've seen what Tunyon's able to do. When he gets down in the red zone, I think this Bears team could be a real red zone scare, especially right. Hopefully the offensive line taking a bit of a step there, which allows you just enough time to be able to make that decision, get that quick decision out there. And it's not just an instinct move of like, oh, God, somebody's in my face. I got to get the heck up out of here. Let me know uh, how you guys are feeling about the Bears uh, in the red zone. Do you think that uh, this team is going to be a dominant red zone team is going to be a team that has a serious red zone threat? I'll be down there in the comments with you guys as well, because I mean, that's that's something huge to me. I mean, like, honestly, the Bears issues even last season, right? You think back to that Washington game, couldn't get the job done in the red zone. How many times last season did we see this team in the red zone just unable to get that final score to, to, to finish off long drives, right? Drives down the field where Justin's, you know, dotting it up a little bit, using the legs a little bit, just can't get in the end zone. I hope that we do see that step from the red zone offense this season. Now, question for you guys. What are your biggest takeaways from minicamp as a whole? I think that we have 
quite a few things that we could look at from minicamp heading into training camp that get us excited. But some of my biggest takeaways, some of my biggest positives, and some of my biggest concerns, right? Number one, the connection to DJ Moore seems to be electrifying. We heard Justin Fields talk today. The one-to-two combo, that one-two punch, seems like it is going to be amazing heading into training camp. These guys have talked about, right, like how even Justin said, they didn't expect it to click this fast. DJ Moore talked earlier. He said, you know, we're kind of working. We're, we're working our way into this thing. We're taking our time with it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that we're not a work in progress. We are. By the end of uh, minicamp now, we're sitting here looking at this, this deep threat that these guys have been working on all offseason, how they've been attacking on the offensive end and uh, and how I think they'll attack during the season and just the connection underneath. It seems like Justin Fields to DJ Moore has been something that is continuously being talked about. Justin Fields even talked about it today as uh, he talked about how Justin uh, or how uh, DJ Moore's, you know, how his, his motions, right? Like he understands the body language that DJ Moore is putting out there. And that makes the connection even easier for him to figure out kind of where DJ and Justin are now again, right? Like, listen, the, nobody's in pads this is all in t-shirts and shorts uh, it makes it a lot easier we'll see what this looks like when we get to training camp in five weeks and guys are in pads but at the end of the day this is something to me where I'm looking at a connection that we can talk about already being in a good place heading into training camp and developing on top of that instead of having to build that connection with somebody which is where we were last season and you know I, I think that that's just a really really good thing to see we haven't heard that from quarterbacks probably since Jay Cutler and Brandon Marshall I mean we didn't hear this about Mitch Trubisky and Allen Robinson working together when they were out there together trying to figure out what their pairing was so it's good to hear that in my opinion I think that's a positive heading into training camp I also think a lot of what we're hearing from the rookies is a really good positive for the Bears, right? Like to me, I look at um, a guy like Darnell Wright who, you know, he went through some struggles, but he is slotted in at that starting position and there is no waiver from where your offensive line is. I guess you could go with the whole offensive line as a whole, right? The fact that that offensive line is set heading into training camp is a major upgrade, right? Remember last season in training camp, you were probably a week and a half, two weeks in to training camp by the time where we kind of started to see a semblance of a set offensive line, right? Like it was, it was one of those things where it was like, yeah, we want to try this guy here. We're moving this guy down. We're going to move this guy up. Let's see if Larry Boyd fits over here. Ah, let's try him over at left tackle. Let's slot Braxton Jones in there. We don't want to give Braxton a job because he's a fifth round pick, but he looks really good, right? Like there was so much movement last season and this season, it feels like your five is set. It feels like you're going into training camp knowing who the heck your five are. You might as well keep rolling with it. I love to see that. I think that's something that the Bears can really hang their hats on, that guys are set in, they're slotted in where they're going to be and the fact that this offensive line is in a good position heading into training camp camp and the fact that we're getting praise from them when people kind of are hesitant to praise them because you can't see really right like with the blocky scheme and stuff like that there's not a lot of pad depth or pad uh, uh um you know the 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 firmness of the pad to sit there and block off of right but we're already hearing that without any schemes coming in without anything going into play that these guys are blocking pretty well i like to hear that already because i mean again you take a look at last year that just was not the case what are you excited about heading into training camp let me know in the comments below i'll be down there talking with you as well this is one of the stories to me that i think is just such a positive and it really gets the juices flowing uh another thing that i can say uh when you're talking about Coming out of uh, mini camp, going into training camp is uh, it feels like we got some leaders established in the building, right? Of course, Justin Fields being one, but it feels like Tremaine Edmonds taking that mantle of leader and actually absolutely, um, you know, put putting on the or, or putting his his uh, uh, um, his leadership on display during uh, mini camp, and and that should continue on. And I think Demarcus Walker even emerging as a leader on this defensive line, right? Like we talked about, uh, we talked about today on the Chicago Bears podcast what that's going to mean for this defensive line with these young guys on there right and how they're going to have somebody that actually is a fixed point for them to look to that kind of gets me a little bit excited as well um i still think that there's something that needs to be done i still think there's some positions that need to be addressed and we have the money to do so but it's good to know that we have those leaders in place already that even if we do sign somebody or if we do trade for somebody right we've got that guy on the defensive line we've got that guy in the linebacking crew we've got that guy in the db room to already be your leaders in 
place. That that to me is something else. Again, this is all about just having a great spot to be in heading into training camp. It's about having a per, a, a really good baseline heading into training camp, right? Because you've started so many training camps behind the eight ball. I love that we're getting an actual like, you know, bam, we're here. Now we just got to make this move. Now we just got to do this. Now we just got to refine this heading into training camp instead of we got to figure out who the heck's going to play where. We have no idea what you're going to be in this offense. So uh, some of the negatives, though, I mean, it's not all positive coming out of training camp or out of mini camp. Um, the one real question mark that is on everybody's mind is, is Chase Claypool okay? Is Chase Claypool going to be okay? Um, is he going to be ready for training camp? Flus has continued to say him, Darnell Mooney, Jack Sanborn, those guys are going to be ready for training camp. We're not trying to push them. We're not, you know, trying to force them into anything because there's going to be some soft tissue issues um, during this time period. And so we don't want them to exaggerate that. We don't want to make it worse. But my concern and my fear is what we've heard from this regime the entire time and previous regimes i mean you think about last season right it's a day-to-day -day thing uh now it's day-to-day -to, -day to week to week now it's week to week to you know we got to get this reevaluated by doctors and then all of a sudden lucas patrick is having surgery and we're sitting here like what the heck how'd this go from day to day to surgery right it was nothing to worry about it was soft tissue that's what i am concerned about here and i, I don't know why football coaches think that they're holding in government secrets you know what i mean like it, 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 that's how it feels with this whole Chase Claypool thing, um, I would love to see Chase get out there. I think the Chase is – this is a big year for Chase. This is going to be an important season for him, and, and you really want to see him be able to go out there and make the most of it. We heard the report yesterday on ESPN 1000 from the Waddle and Sylvie show that they're not happy with where Chase Claypool is at. I asked Courtney about that. Courtney said she's not hearing those things. That's not to say Sylvie's not hearing them from somebody inside of the building, but she said that she's not hearing that from the coaches and the coaching staff that is in place. But to me, right, like – whether you're hearing that or not, it doesn't matter because right now he's not even on the field to make an impact. He hasn't been on the field since week one of OTAs. So I was somebody that I wanted Claypool here. I felt like he was a good weapon you could go get. I felt like we left him in Pittsburgh to die. Claypool has to start producing a little bit on the, uh, it, it would be great to see him at least out there working, seeing what he's worked on during the off season. Hopefully he's been in his playbook enough. Hopefully, you know, when we get to training camp, it is just a soft tissue injury and we're heading into training camp full speed ahead. But that is a concern of mine right now because at this point, right, like when, when I'm looking at it, we didn't get to see anything. Did he look good the one day, the one week he was out there, the couple of days he was out there, I should say? Yeah, he did. Like, sure, he, he, he seemed like he had a nice little rapport with Justin. Um, but is there a little bit of a concern it, it, to me that we haven't seen this guy the entire time and hopefully heading into uh, and, and that there are reports, I should say, heading into training camp that, um, you know, there's some people around Chicago who are unhappy with them. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned because this guy was the 32nd overall pick. That's what you traded him for. He was the 32nd overall pick. You could have gotten a nice player with the 32nd overall pick. You thought he was going to be a guy that was going to shake up this wide receiver room, and he just hasn't been able to do that yet. But again, we'll see when training camp gets here. As with all of these guys, man, everybody else seems like they're on schedule. They're on pace to head um, into training camp ready to go. I'm excited to see. Uh, what this Bears team is going to be. I, I'm just, I'm ex I'm so ready to get the training camp. I mean, we got five weeks from now until then. We're still going to be talking Bears football the entire time. Probably get some Bulls basketball in there as well. But for the most part, right, like you're just sitting here and you're ready for the season to be here. Five weeks is going to take a while to get through, but you know, at the end of the day, we'll still have coverage on all of it. Let me know some of your biggest concerns about the Chicago Bears heading into the season. Let me know some of your biggest, uh, the things that you're most excited about heading into the season. I'll be down in the comments talking with you guys as well. As always, it's your boy, Pat, the designer, back at it again to continue watching our Chicago Bears content. Click the links on the screen or check the links in the description below. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. One love. Peace.